take a little bit of a moment here. We'll jump into the thought process here and then talk about the ear section for a moment of technology, acquisition, and strategy. And I'm certain that I'm not uh, talking about anything that this audience doesn't already know about. Uh, but if you think about this in terms of uh, technology illustrated by Moore's Law, number of transistors on a chip, if you will, doubling every 18 months. What does that mean? That means processing speed and storage capacity. But it's every 18 months. Uh, if we look at the acquisition process and, and give me the benefit of surround off there, it's now running about 18 years. Uh, so you can do the math yourself and see that uh, when the product gets to the warfighter, uh, how outdated it might be at that point in time. And then we're keeping things. Uh, longer and longer. Uh, so you can see the illustration here, the number of years aircraft have been in the inventory and will be. Uh, C-130, P-3, U-2, B-52, all over 50 years and counting uh, as you move forward. And then last, and, and maybe out to 81 years, or 84, as we'll see in a moment, is what is currently pegged for the B-52 today. And then last is strategy. Strategy cycles uh, more on the administration timeframes. So on a four or eight year cycle, uh, as you move through this, so you can see that these trends are wildly divergent, but they're the environment that we operate in today. We want to take a quick look uh, in terms of air dominance or fighters and illustrate uh, where we've where we've come, pretty short development times if you go back to World War II, uh, and pretty short in the field, and high numbers. Uh, so what's that transition to? Longer times to get it to the field, get the aircraft, the capability to the field, uh, as well as uh, unable, or unable to get them to the field in rapid time. And now they're staying much longer across the board. So that's what's going on in the fighter community. If we take a look at the bomber community, on the other hand, B-52 is a great illustration. And the question that's always posed in these kinds of forums is, when is the last B-52 pilot been born? And perhaps the real question that I heard the other day is, when's the last B-52 pilot's mother been born? Uh, so it's a testimony to industry Warfighter and the acquirers to maintain these aircraft uh, with a capability for that kind of period of time and continue to improve it. Uh, the downside comes with the ever increasing costs. Along with Moore's Law brings a complexity element. And as you can see here, regardless of how you measure it, the dramatic increase in complexity the systems being provided today. And those mathematicians can match that curve and see where it's going. We'll take a look at that in a couple of different ways. But the key thing about complexity, it is significantly driving the schedule that's driving the time period to get the assets to the fight. When we say capability, we can look at the functionality of software. Again, the functionality of the weapons system is being driven by software. And whether you measure that in lines of code or other um, metrics that are used today, you see this dramatic impact of software and thus the verification and validation of software on program schedules and time and testing. So when you're, you're in the neighborhood of 87%, where we are on the F-35, which, oh, by the way, does not have uh, the same number of lines of code as a modern luxury car like a Lexus or a Mercedes that has less. Then where we are is the testing required is dramatically increased, and therefore the cost to test through all that capability. In addition, This is, uh, again, a chart that takes us 
over the last 50 years of history in terms of how long taking to get uh, uh, aircraft to the field. But as you can see, the complexity, if you will, is a huge driver in that time period. So fewer aircraft taking longer, cost more, but more capable. How does that fit with the, the chasm of death, if you will, the valley of death? That everyone in the acquisition business understands the requirements uh, from the, I have a great idea, I develop a thought, now I've actually got to get into an EMD, and then I've got to sustain it in the future. Why is that important? It's not only the cost, uh, but that's where the designers are, in the middle of that chasm of death. Those that take that good idea, bring it to fruition, deliver it to the war fire across the board. What happens if there's nothing in the chasm, or nothing it bridges the chasm, gets across the chasm, is that designer group of engineers begins to retreat, begins to, uh, in effect, go away. And once they're gone, then you do not have that capability in the future. So where are we? Inventory shrinking, fewer aircraft being built, longer acquisition time, those in the inventory are getting older. And you can see again, in, this, in the middle of this group that needs to be exercised to continue to have the capability. Of course, the challenge is, on top of everything else, the bad guys are not going away. They are right there with the J-20 and the Fokkenhoff. 